Hey, good afternoon, Osseo Strong community. This is Dakota Gerard. Well, I want to spend a little bit of time. We've fielded a few questions recently about you know how different PEMF systems may vary. So I've asked our inventor, Jim Gerard, who's also my father, to give a more technical explanation for this. If you really think about it, everything vibrates, whether it's on an atomic level. So if you look at atoms, atoms literally vibrate at the speed of light. As atoms clump together and become now molecules, they start vibrating at a slightly lower spectrum of frequencies between uh, middle microwave up through visible light. And then there's a magnetic spectra. So that magnetic spectra is actually much lower frequencies. So if you've ever been to a hospital and had MRI, what the MRI does is it puts you in a very strong magnetic field that lines all your cells up. And then what they do is they broadcast radio frequencies to determine how um, cells absorb and emit frequencies. So that spectrum of frequencies falls from 1,000 hertz up to that microwave. So what happens with a device like this when we're generating those wide range of frequencies and harmonics, we're affecting the magnetic spectra, we're affecting the molecular spectra, as well as an atomic level. So what we're trying to do with those frequencies and harmonics is actually resonate everything from an atomic, molecular, all the way down to the magnetic. So here I have this just a biocharger. I removed the secondary coil and all the lights and just showing you what the, the pulse electromagnetic field part of it is. So I'm going to use a light as a demonstration. You will see that this does not produce any voltage in and around here. But internally, you can see, I don't know if is that showing up in there? Yes. You can see it's lighting up a little bit into the tube, so when I get away, it's off. Then it just turn back on. But there is a, it induces a voltage into this field. So what does that mean? So traditionally with pulse electromagnetic fields, when you have an RNA-DNA coil, it induces a voltage in there. So that RNA-DNA coil is very similar to this secondary coil. So now I'm going to add in the secondary coil to it. So when you hit it now, you'll see the voltage is a much higher spectrum. So we're actually pulsing lights clear out here, I mean, as you can see, further out in the way. And that's more the E part of the pulse electromagnetic field. We're also pulsing it, and as you can hear those different pulsing sounds, we're actually taking just strictly the magnetic field component we're able to pulse it up to 50,000 times per second. At the same time, as you see this corona discharge, we're also generating frequencies and harmonics. So we have lightning discharges every second on the planet. Up to 100 lightning strikes every second occur. And these lightning strikes produces a wide range of frequencies and harmonics that span the whole spectrum of frequencies from AM, FM, shortwave, longwave, UHF, VHF, microwave, millimeter, all the way up to visible light. So finally, I want to talk about the visible light component. As mentioned earlier, light is life. So how does light actually be produced in nature? So natural light is actually caused from all the different gases in the atmosphere that get excited to fluorescent that releases photons of light. Similarly, we have the different types of elements that you would see in nature exposed to the, the high voltage here, and it also causes these two light to fluorescent. So what we're actually trying to do is re, reproduce the way nature actually produces visible light. So as you can see, the different gases light up, and it's, it's, before I started up, each tube was clear, but each tube has a different gas in it, and each gas will light up specific frequencies in the visible light spectrum. So those are the four energy types these are the four energy types of the biocharger. We have that magnetic field component. We have an electric field component that produces voltage and frequencies and harmonics. And finally, we have the visible light component. I hope this helps and clarifies some of the questions people have. Thank you.